There are some weeks I absolutely love my job. This is one of them. Here in Pittsburgh, Robbie Weidman is in the studio. He has been out of prison for just about three months after spending almost 44 years behind bars across the state. In across Pennsylvania at our studios in KYW is Mark Schwartz, his attorney. Mark, I want to start with you just as we come back. And I'm going to ask Robbie this question, too. You've been involved since the early 80s. How did you continue this fight on his behalf? Because it had to be frustrating, it had to be tiring, and it had to be expensive. Well, it was all of those things, but it was my pleasure to do it. And uh, if anyone knew K. Leroy Irvis, you don't take things he asks you to do lightly. Uh, you want to do your best because he was such an exemplary public figure. Um, the case was frustrating. Um, you know, I first was involved with a pardon attempt in 1984. Frankly, it was too soon. If you mm -hmm. look at the numbers of, you know, Governor Schaap was liberal, but, you know, this was still less than I think that the, the average was like 11 years to be served under the Schaap administration. And then it just turned, you know, with Ridge and with Thornburg and all of these get tough prosecutors, which is now why we have you know, a bunch of prisons serving a bunch of really men. Um, 19 provided an interesting opportunity because um, it was found out that the Morena family, the decedent's family, accused um, Southside Hospital and some doctors of medical malpractice. In so doing, they were saying that was the cause. Mm. There was a substantial settlement. And we brought a petition for a new trial based on that, that a jury should have known about the medical malpractice in terms of making a determination as to causation of death. Mm -hmm. Cyril Wecht was a terrific uh, expert. We used the decedent's expert, um, Morena family's expert, who was a distinguished Georgetown doctor who'd lectured about this all over the country. I mean, basically, this Nicola Morena would have lived but for a chest tube that was commonly used uh, in the 60s and 1950s. Um, and, and basically what was regrettable is that we got a new trial and Robbie was ordered to be released from trial, or released from jail by Judge McGregor. Pending and, the trial. And uh, your wonderful DA, Mr. Zapala. Yeah, and okay. your wonderful, I remember the Weidman family had the Thanksgiving and your wonderful district attorney ignored the order and ordered him to be held in jail uh, pending his appeal. He should have been out awaiting trial uh, while the DA did any sort of appeal. But Let, uh, let me stop you right you know, there because then... That's I, that, the quality of your... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that's a good way for me to segue to you because when we talk about the ups and downs of this case, for you personally, that had to... Were you anticipating... Uh, coming home for Thanksgiving, or were you of the mindset of hope for the best, expect the worst? Oh, no. I was, uh, I rode back to no, the prison no. with the bond uh -huh. papers in my hand, mm. like this. Mm. Uh, I'll never forget the ride, bumping around in the paddy wagon, and even the sheriffs were excited to get me back there because they knew all I had, I was supposed to go back to the prison, sign out, and leave. And uh, when I got back, everything felt strange. Nobody wanted to talk to me. I mm. kept saying, well, you know, I got the bond papers. When am I leaving? Where do I sign out? We don't know nothing about that. We don't know nothing about that. And the warden was right outside of the room where you get strip searched and everything to go back into prison. And I asked him, what's going on? I got the bond papers. I still had them. I wouldn't let them go. Mm -hmm. I got the bond papers here. I'm supposed to be going. He said, well, uh, we'll see, and smiled at me. And right then, it, it sent a chill through me. I knew something was wrong. Mm -hmm. So naturally, I tried to make some calls, and I tried, and, you know, it, it all turned sour. But uh, so the next morning, they took me back down to the uh, courthouse, kept me there. I was the last one in the bullpen, the first one in there, and the last one out. So I stayed in there all day long. And they finally took me up there and took the bond back and told me, you know, I had to stay in prison until 
the new trial and eventually also took the new trial back by evidence that no one prosecuting uh, the prosecutors nor us ever submitted. They talked about issues that weren't even uh, submitted at the hearing that we had for me to get the new trial. Mm -hmm. It was a pretty much a travesty. Uh, if you ask Mark about it or if we had uh, Dr. Weck here, the two of them will get real excited about it. I try not to because it's emotional for me, but mm -hmm. uh, both of them and even um, Judge Manning were all very upset about what happened and uh, the way things turned out. You know, I try not to at this point dwell on it too much sure, because sure. I'm out here now. There you go. Because you're here now, <laughs> indeed. we got to take a commercial break. We have a lot more to talk about. I wish we had an hour today, but we don't. Stick around. We'll be right back.